favorite IV memory was uh, freshman year, me and I don't know if any of you guys know Eagle, but uh, we would go down into the basement of Brocker every night, or almost every night, and play video games or just look up at random YouTube videos or stuff until 3 in the morning, and then go to 8 a.m. the next morning. So, um, yeah, not the best decisions, but it was just really fun to like get to know him and like just share life with somebody like that. My favorite memory would be just all the late nights, especially freshman year, sophomore year, um, going to McDonald's and Walmart and just staying up and talking with the girls in Wilgus. Um, henna nights were really fun too, doing henna designs on each other because that kind of forced everybody to stay for a really long time because it took an hour or two for the henna to dry and then everybody was able to socialize and just... Um... Um, I would have to say my favorite memory is when we were doing the Whitcomb Film Festival and we had the Zabuma Chad and we pretended to hit him with my old Volvo and it was kind of hilarious <laughs> and then just watching Chad Jones bounce around like Zabuma <laughs> Well apart from living with Stacy Martin, since that's a big memory there, I would have to say that the first one that comes to mind is fall conference this past year. It was just real fun and exciting to get to hang out and spend time with the people that live in our dorm for our WICOM and just getting to know the new freshmen that I got to come with. And it's always fun when you get to stay up late with people and do things such as playing baseball with pillows and marshmallows <laughs> and watching the same YouTube video like five times in a row and having it be just as funny the last time as it was the first time. My favorite memory. I'd say my favorite memory was the 17th Bible study that I attended. Not really. It was a good Bible study, but my favorite memory was more of uh, putting up these large Bigfoot posters in the hallway, and they were kind of put in strategic locations where you know you walk a corner and then it'd be there to surprise you. So it was a lot of fun with my wingmates, and it was even more rewarding to hear this people scream when they act, when they were surprised, so that was a lot of fun. There, <laughs> there are so many, but I think some of my favorites come from when I uh, led Ivy League. Um, specifically my first year leading Ivy League, I somehow found myself in a corner of the room and it felt like it was hailing on me because I was getting pelted in the head with starbursts. Um, I think I might have instigated that uh, starburst throwing, but that was some of my most favorite memories, spending some time with those people um, and getting to learn alongside of, of them. That was my first chapter focus week. I ran in the hall, which you're not supposed to do, and they still hired me in the halls to take a tour, but I ran in the halls and I broke and dislocated my pinky toe the night before we were supposed to leave. So, you know, things were going great. Um, so I still participated in volleyball and tennis and all these different activities and met a bunch of great people um, and it was a whole lot of fun. But the one interaction that I will never forget is Jay Khan. And he came up to me and he said, who are you and why do you know all of my friends? Uh, and that was how, how we met because I was involved in the musical my spring semester first year here. So I wasn't always at uh, Quest on Thursday nights but I was super involved, um, still just building those relationships elsewhere. Um, so it's one of the very first encounters with j that I've ever had, and I will never forget it. Um, so my favorite memories with, uh, through InterVarsity has definitely been playing on the worship team and being involved with the, the um, camps, just the chapter focus week especially. I know that's coming up, you guys should all go. It's a blast. Um, you make a lot of great friends and you learn a lot about the Lord and just your personal growth. Um, it's just outstanding in that weekend. Mine is um, at the beginning of this past year, the Mora women decided to have a cookout, a hot dog brat fry cookout. <laughs> and uh, um, then roast marshmallows went to um, Mountain View Park and um, just had a fun time getting to know um, get back on the same page with everybody and then afterwards we had a really nice stargazing. Um, we kind of just laid blankets out and just sat in silence kind of and just looked up at the stars or star. We tried taking pictures, it failed. But um, 
<laughs> well, um, first of all, I became a Christian while I was in college, so that's uh, that's probably the top memory. And then uh, we'll get more to that later. And then beyond that, <clears throat> I would have to say my favorite memories are being able to go to conferences and being able to spend time with with the women that I live with in a time that wasn't focused on academics or getting things done. It was just time to learn about God and be with other people who were also learning about God. Um, most of the stuff we do at Melcher, which is quite weird for a lot of people, um, but doing random guy stuff and then a couple trips down to Ebets to shoot stuff and just kind of hang out, have fun. Um, so my favorite memory for university was definitely MUP. My spring semester of my sophomore year, um, through MUP, I came, uh, I became more aware of how big God's heart is and how he just loves to like shelter the outcast. And I became more aware of how we as Christians can stand for justice and how we can reach out to those that are marginalized by society. Um, it was a very transforming experience for me. So God has mainly transformed me in college um, by giving me confidence in what he is able to do um, in different circumstances. Uh, one of the biggest ways that I saw this happen was um, I didn't really want to be a leader my sophomore year. Uh, I was kind of scared of it because I didn't think I would be good at it. And um, God gave me the opportunity to kind of do a replanting of a witnessing community with a couple other people in Brockert Hall. And uh, now there's two Whitcoms in Brockert Hall. And like, it was cool to see how I didn't have to be super great at anything in order for that to happen. He just moved and he made things happen. Um, so like, that gives me a lot of confidence that I don't have to be great because he already is. Um, I would say that God transformed my life in college by uh, showing me that I don't have to be perfect. Um, and I think he did that by just giving me circumstances where I didn't have the answers for people and it showed me that he really does have all the answers and he's the one who's going to reveal himself to people. Um, well, I would say God has done a total transformation on my life. Um, I came into college um, having kind of pushed myself away from God a little bit and then avoided listening to Caleb Johnson but laid on his feet on for like three years anyways and <laughs> talked with him. Um, and then I kind of went over one summer and you know reached my all-time low and then found God there and came back and was totally on mission. So I was one of those people that did like the 180 thing um, and started following Jesus and trying to reach out to other people and I got to see um, my brother come to know Jesus sh shortly in that time period as well through totally separate means but really similar and it was really cool and that also kind of encouraged me in, in my walk. So my first two years here at UW Platteville, I wasn't as involved with university right away. So after my first fall conference, um, I became a lot more involved and I kind of really noticed what it was really like to be a Christian. So from that, I kind of grew in my faith and I've just been continuing to grow in that and just be a lot more bold in my faith and being able to you know, talk to people about it or invite them to university. It's just been a big change for me since then. So God's done a ton of work in me uh, throughout my time here at UW Platteville. I could spend a ton of time, hours, easily just talking about this. I think the biggest thing though that, that God has taught me and revealed to me is that I don't have to work to, to win his approval. I don't have to win it because uh, God's already perfectly pleased in me through what Christ did on the cross. I came into college as a, as a freshman, super gung-ho about stuff, but I kind of missed the point. I thought that my worth was in how much I could do for God. I thought God loved me because of the actions that I took. So when I got to college, and I didn't exactly know how I fit into university here, I, I, 
I, my self-esteem just went away because I, I had nothing to do. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't just be satisfied in God. I had to do something else. So in that, I, I was super sad and broke. I'm like, man, what the heck? And in, in that kind of sadness, God revealed to me, Zach, I love you. you. You don't have to do anything. I've already done it all. You can rest. And that began a, a long period of God teaching me about himself. And that was super awesome. And it still continues to this day. And I'm really excited to see how God's going to continue to grow me throughout my life. Uh, so God's done a lot. Um, a lot of people will be like, she's not that different. She's still loud and crazy and hyper and ridiculous, um, which is very true. Um, but God definitely has done a really big heart change in me. Um, I grew up with religion, but it was very legalistic and I didn't always have the best view of it, so I wasn't personally connected with it. Um, and here in college, God just transformed my heart and was like, you're my daughter. Um, you're a princess, you're a warrior, and I have a lot of plans for you. Um, and so he gave me cares of my heart um, that I didn't even know I could have, um, where I just love people so much more just for who they are because they're made in God's image, and I want them to know who he is as well. Um, and just through that, he's given me confidence to go about my day, to go about whatever tasks I have to do um, and whatever steps are next in the journey that he has, um, just trusting in him and that he has it all planned out. So God has really transformed me through um, college this last couple of years, uh, just through growing my faith and making it my own. Uh, it used to be my parents and now it's definitely mine. I can say I have a personal relationship with him um, and that's just been so great. And it's just grown exponentially through just the community I've been in, in Huguenin especially, and um, just the InterVarsity group. Uh, it's been great to grow through and with them towards Christ. Uh, like I said, I became a Christian in college, so that was, that was pretty transforming. Uh, before, I was very concerned about what I did. I was very works oriented, I guess. And my, my identity, there we go, my identity was stuck in what I could do and in being perfect at everything and doing everything right. And I've been transformed and it's it's not about that anymore because I can't be perfect. And, um, but it doesn't matter because God loves me. Like, and he knows everything about me and that's just He's prompted me to love further, to forgive, to let go, and just to kind of understand my life um, in, a, in a much deeper sense. Um, and, you know, when there are days when I'm uh, like doubting or just feeling ashamed or lost, um, like, he, he always reminds me who I am and who he is, and that kind of motivates me to keep going forward. Um, so the main words of wisdom that I would give is um, that you don't have to be um, anything great in order for God to use you. Like he's already on mission in Platteville right now, um, and he's working in the hearts of the people that you uh, feel like you need to reach out to. Um, the people that he's putting on your heart, he's already working in their hearts. Um, so like, ask God where he wants you to join him on mission. Don't try to think that you have to be great and go out and do it yourself because he's already working. So my advice would be don't give up on community. Um, that's where you're going to grow, that's where you're going to stretch and learn a lot from each other. Um, you're going to learn that community isn't perfect and people let you down, but you're also going to see the transforming love of Christ through people and in yourself. Um, I would say, you know, keep keep your eyes on the prize. Your your time here is really really short. Um, and looking back, you don't like while you're in college, you don't realize how short it is. But when you get to the end, you're like, wow, that was really really short. Um, and so, you know, don't don't get too caught up in, in studies and things, but make time for God and and pursuing Him because. The opportunities that you have here are amazing and they just aren't there in the real world necessarily. Jesus is enough. Find your satisfaction and find your joy in Jesus. There's nowhere else where we can be totally and completely fulfilled 
than when we're trying to follow God, when we're seeking our joy in God. When we seek our joy in God, we're doing what we were made to do in the first place. And it's awesome. There's, there's more life there than, than we know. We can spend our whole life following God and not have the total amount of joy that's available because God is infinite and we can have infinite joy in Him. So it's one long, fun run. It, it can be really tempting though to, to try to find our satisfaction in school, in grades, how other people think of us, uh, relationships, jobs, work, money, you name it. There's tons of things out there that seem really good, but they're really not. They're just going to end in brokenness and you're not going to be satisfied. Pursue your joy in Jesus. Uh, my words of wisdom are to seek the Lord with all your heart. Uh, he's totally worth following and he's got an amazing plan for all of us to use us for his mission and you're not going to want to miss it. So, someone who is very smart, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who he is, but he said, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. And that is so true. The people that drew me into university, they were different, they were happy, and I knew that Jesus was involved somehow, and I needed to know more. And that was what made all the difference for me. And I'm sure that other people are like me. So to be satisfied in Jesus and people will see it and they will take note. Uh, words of wisdom, don't be afraid to be yourself. God meets you where you are um, right now and he loves you the way you are. And so you've been given unique dreams and you've been given unique talents and views and culture and personality. So don't ever be ashamed of that, um, use that to reach out to others and show them who God is. So I'm getting married to Hannah Orr next. That's kind of the, the next big adventure. Uh, yeah, so I guess directly relating into how you can pray for me is uh, just all the things that come along with marriage, um, learning how to love her well um, and not, um, not just stopping at how well I know her or um, the things that I do for her now, just continuing to learn how Christ loved the church and learning to reflect that in the way that I love her. I'm getting married in June, so that's exciting. And I will be student teaching in the fall in the Platteville area. Um, and yeah, I guess like within this year or two, Nathan and I will be listening to God's voice, like if he wants us to stay around here and be a part of the Platteville community and serve here or um, somewhere else in the big city or something. <laughs> so you can be praying for us that we don't lose sight of um, building God's kingdom and that he would open doors for us to do that within the church, within our jobs, um, and that we would learn uh, about God's love and be able to love each other and the people around us well in our marriage. Um, so Beverly and I are getting married in July, so that is really, 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 really exciting. Um, and so if, if you guys could be praying for us with wedding planning and um, just, you know, that the wedding goes really well and that it's able to honor God and that we're able to show Him through it, because um, that is one of our goals with it. Um, and then we're going to be honeymooning in Colorado, so praying that that trip goes well <laughs> and nothing, nothing breaks down on the way out there. Um, and then I'll be starting full-time at Ensite in Howard, Wisconsin, which is like a part of Green Bay. Um, and that will be a new adventure as well for us. So what is coming up next for me? Um, I'm not exactly sure at this moment. I've had a couple interviews that I am still a potential candidate for, so waiting to hear back on those. So for now, I'll just be moving back home um, until I hear back from them or accept a position. So ways that you can be praying for me is just that God opens the right doors and closes those where he doesn't want me to be. So just prayer in that and then prayer that I would find the guidance and know what position to accept and 
where he wants me to be for that. Um, next for me. So I'm not really sure at this point. I have a couple of companies who are kind of interested in me, but I'm not going to hear back from them till next week, maybe. Um, one of the play, one of the companies that's interested in me is a water engineering firm in Mason City, Iowa. That's it's a private firm, so I might end up there. And, and another place that I might end up would be somewhere out west, working with Indian Health Service, providing sanitation uh, facilities for uh, Native Americans who don't have access to drinking water, just basic sanitary things. So one of those two things, or maybe something totally wild card different. I don't know. It'll be fun. Go team. Um, so I guess pray for wisdom in moving in moving forward in my career, and then pray for for me to be able to find a good community, a good Christian community that I can not only get involved with and attend, but make a difference in and kind of take what I've learned here in college and apply it to the world. Um, I am still unsure. I do not have a job at this time, but right now I'm going to be returning home um, in the Northern Illinois area to return to the farm. So um, hopefully, you know, through that I can just begin my journey in agriculture and I hope I can find a job soon and um, just connect back to some people my age and, and in a strong community. Um, with that, ways you can be praying for me would be, you know, ultimately finding a job um, and like I said, finding a strong community. Um, I had a good community before I left, but um, a lot of those have departed now to move on to other campuses or um, other jobs. So finding another strong community with people my age would be my biggest prayer request. Um, so I have no idea. Woo, we're doing great. <laughs> um, very opposite of the planner side of Hannah. Um, I'm still in the process of looking for a job, uh, but God's gonna pull me in every which way, uh, wherever he wants me to go. Um, so first for just clarity with that, uh, and trusting in wherever he's calling me to go. Um, I'll be graduating this year, which I'm really excited about. And uh, on top of that, I'm getting married to a wonderful gal named Maddie Mercer. So. Uh, really looking forward to spending my life with her and also I have a job in Madison so definitely you can be praying for me with uh, finding a new church in Madison and just being a light in the workforce. I'm getting married <laughs> in July <laughs> um, so that's exciting um, and kind of nervous as well uh, but a lot of planning left to do so prayer for um, that transition to be smooth. Um, there's going to be a lot of transitions coming, going from college life to um, big people life. <laughs> uh, so um, definitely pray for that um, as well. I'm also going to be seeking out a job. Um, so preferably something in the area around where we're going to be staying. Well, I've applied to a bunch of jobs. I've had a few get back to me, but I don't have anything concrete set up for afterwards. So prayer for actually getting a job, that's that's one good way to start. And then after that, upon finding a job and then moving to wherever that is, it would be to find a good Christian community that's gospel-centered. Uh, so I'm like, transferring out of here. Um, I'm transferring into seminary to start the really long process of uh, becoming a priest um, so I think the biggest thing would just be pray that God keeps working with me um, and keeps showing me where he wants me and that I can do the best that he do what he needs the best I can so I'm gonna be kind of going from place to place for a while um, I have an internship at a wildlife center and then I'm going to be home for a while and then I'm probably going to be doing a year of reclamation work through AmeriCorps and so um, prayer would be good just so I can just to that I can make new friendships and not just new friendships but deep friendships and that I can be a light for God that way um, just I need prayer for boldness and that um, I am just able to find and just be surrounded by Christian community One of the main reasons it's worth it to be on a mission is 
being able to see what God does in your life and in other people around you. Um, I think one of the things that really struck me this year was we had a Friendsgiving thing during Thanksgiving. It was like our Thanksgiving meal in Brockard Hall. And I looked around at all the people that um, in my WITCOM who I had impacted their life and they've impacted my life in a big way. And uh, just seeing that if that had, if I hadn't been on a mission, like I wouldn't have been able to experience any of that. Um, seeing God transform both my life and their lives through each other, um, building each other up and uh, speaking the gospel into each other's lives. Yeah, it's completely worth it to be on mission in college. Um, following Jesus means being on mission. And it's not worth it because of any sort of glory you get. Like, if you're in it for getting approval or anything like that, then that's not gonna satisfy you. But um, it's worth it because God getting all the glory is really cool to see, and it's so much better than you getting all the glory, and that happens when you're on mission, and you get to see lives transformed, um, and it's clearly through the Holy Spirit, through God's doing. Yeah, so for me, uh, why is it worth it? Well, it totally, totally changed my life, so I think that just knowing what he's done for me and how good that's been and seeing the same transformation happen in my brother and seeing how good that's been for him um, has really been a huge driving force behind why I want other people to have that happen to them, why I want them to know Jesus. Um, and then once I started kind of getting more involved, reaching out to people in college, trying to do gigs and things, getting to see their lives transform in the same way, uh, that really makes it all worth it. Um, and just seeing other people come to know Jesus and um, it's it's so important and it's like the best thing anyone could have in their life like you can't it doesn't get any better than that they can't get a good grade and compare it to having Jesus or something like that like it's it's literally the best so mission on campus why is it worth it well I think one big misconception that I've faced sometimes is that it's something that I have to do. It's this extra thing that God's like, hey, get the gospel, and you have to do this stuff. That's not really how it works. They're kind of one and the same, sort of. Um, sharing our faith and being on mission with God should be like an outpouring of joy. Because the gospel is too good to keep to ourselves. Like, if we really think about the gospel and what that actually means, that's huge. It's bigger than we can even grasp in our minds. It's too good, too good for us to just keep to ourselves. So it's been something for me that's given me lots of joy in life. In joining God and pursuing his lost people, I kind of get a picture of how much God loves me and how much he desperately wants to pursue my heart and get to know me more and to root out the sin and give me joy in his glory. And I guess what that's looked like for me here on campus, um, it's looked like me abiding in God, dwelling in God, spending time with God first, making sure that my heart's in the right spot placing my heart in a spot where I have joy in Jesus and then letting that joy spill out into the lives of others. So functionally what that's looked like is just kind of living life how I normally would. I run, I fish, play sports, I eat, shock of all shocks, and just using those times for for God's glory, for, for conversations. It's a good, good place to, to get to know people, just doing the things that you do. Um, uh, I've lived on campus for four years. Sometimes it's not been the most fun, you know, when I, I'm tired and I want some privacy and just people running all over the place. But living with the people that I'm trying to reach has been super critical. And I've kept a meal plan for all four years because I, I know when I recognize them, when I get really busy, one of the first things that gets cut out is God. So I need to schedule in some times where I'm, I'm following God and, and joining Him in His mission, and so I can eat with people and talk to them about Jesus. It's great. Let me tell you why it's worth it to be on mission with Jesus. <laughs> um, you are going to have so much joy. You are going to have, um, joy is the best word for it. Uh, you're going to have so much joy. You're going to uh, 
have such a better experience by living the way he wants you to do and doing what he wants for you because that's what's going to be what's best for you. Um, I look at how I started college and I look at how I ended college and um, I was living for myself at the start of college and I saw the emptiness and the lack of satisfaction that was there and now looking towards the end of college and when I'm leaving I'm like yeah living for God is so much better because you just have so much more fun with it and it's so much more satisfying day to day um, with what he has planned for you. If you can see someone transform from having the worries of this world but having them like eat at their heart you know like my identity is in what I do and what how people see me to have them change from that to my identity is in the fact that God loves me, that's clearly worth it, that's worth everything.